am Dharna Noor, and we really need your help to make real news, so donate at the link right there. It's the Real News Network, and I'm Greg Wilpert. This January 1st, 2019, marks the 25th anniversary of NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. I'm joined by Lori Wallach, the director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch, who has been working on NAFTA and also on the new NAFTA, which she just recently published two reports, uh, one of them dealing with the new NAFTA. This is part two of our discussion about the new and the old NAFTA. Thanks for joining us today, Lori. Thank you. So what would you say are the main problems in this new NAFTA, or NAFTA 2.0 as you're calling it? In the balance of things, the way this agreement I would say is, is it is the good, the bad, and the incomplete. And you heard about some of the good. The incomplete is the labor and environmental standards because the environment standards need to be strengthened. The labor ones could use some strengthening too, but there's some real improvements there, how meaningful changes. However, neither the environmental nor labor standards are, are subject to the appropriate monitoring or swift and certain enforcement mechanisms that are necessary for the standards on paper to actually translate into changing people's lives. So then you have the thing that's really worse, and that is the big pharmaceutical companies got goodies put into this agreement by Trump. The agreement includes a sudden monopoly rights, including, for instance, a 10-year guarantee of marketing exclusivity for biologic drugs, the cutting edge medicines for cancer, that will lock in place higher prices so that all of the new reform proposals that say Democrats are pushing to bring down drug prices by bringing in generic competition, those would be made illegal trade barriers by these terms. So the work going forward is to make sure the good stuff stays in and gets improved. The stuff that's halfway done, they improve to actually make the labor and environmental standards enforceable. And that the bad stuff, the giveaways to big pharma that would lock in high medicine prices, that stuff has to go out. That kind of a package would actually be better than no NAFTA. Because that kind of package could help raise wages in Mexico, which would be good for people there, but also stop the biggest incentive for outsourcing. It would end the corporate attacks and the environmental and labor laws. And it would make sure that the big pharmaceutical companies don't get a free ride on a free trade agreement to actually have bigger monopolies and higher prices. Hmm. Well, um, what I'm wondering, though, is um, now, of course, this next step would be for the agreement to be ratified in the U.S. Congress. Now, do you see any kind of movement uh, on the part of, let's say, Democrats or other members of Congress to genuinely improve this deal in the direction that you're indicating? So what happened in response to the signing of the NAFTA on November 30th wasn't the usual situation where the unions and public citizen and the progressive Democrats all launch a campaign to kill the agreement. Instead, because there's some important improvements, such as the labor standards, which if they were made enforceable, would be better than, no, than having no NAFTA at all. That would actually bring up wages. It wouldn't just be getting rid of the NAFTA. So people see there are things to be harvested that are progressive demands, getting rid of ISDS. This is all possible, but only if the improvements are made. So uniformly, from the Democratic leaders, Pelosi and Schumer, to Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and Mark Pocan and Rosa DeLauro and the unions and public citizen, what folks all said is, hey, you made some progress. But there is more that needs to be done before this agreement is going to even stop the ongoing damage. So you have to create swift and certain enforcement of the labor and environmental standards. You have to strengthen the environmental standards. You've got to take out the outrageous goodies for big pharma that would lock in high medicine prices. And if you do reform, rep improve, repair, let me start over, take two. And if there is an agreement that actually meets these important improvements, well, then that is close to some of the things Democrats have always asked for. And of course, they'd be willing to support what they've asked for. That's the kind of agreement that can get to the Democratic House. Hmm. After the election, the only NAFTA redo agreement that's going to get passed is one that actually meets these Democratic demands, which means the current agreement's going to have to get improved. And a dirty little secret is over half of our current free trade agreements have been sent back for renegotiation after they were signed simply because they couldn't get through the Congress as is. So I suspect the next real phase in the agreement is not going to a vote to pass it, 
but rather it's a discussion between the administration and the House Democrats about what needs to be improved, and then a discussion between the administration in Mexico and Canada about how to do that, and then at some point, probably in the late spring, we'll see the final package, and then we'll know if it's an agreement that deserves support or not. Okay. Well, I hope we can have you on again once we have a clear idea as to which direction this is going. Um, but we're going to have to leave it there for now. I was speaking to Lori Wallach, Director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch. Thanks again, Lori, for having joined us today. Thank you. Bye. And thank you for joining The Real News Network. Hi, I'm Tracy Beal, the Marketing Director here at The Real News Network. And there's still time left in our end of the year fundraiser for you to donate. Donate now.